grace for today. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What a great God we serve. My job is to remind you of the greatness of God and how God really is for you. He's for you. I know you think of all the things and the reasons why he shouldn't be for you, but beloved, God is for you. That's the short version. He really is for you. And when he's for us, he orders our steps. He helps us. He gives us grace for the day. God bless you all. So glad to see you on. I was sitting here sipping tea and forgot what time it was. God bless you. We are so glad to be here and to share with you the word of the Lord. We're going to continue talking about the Lord, our God. Good morning. Hey, y'all. I hope your internet's doing okay this morning. So we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to go back. I'm going to give you all a few moments to come on. This tea is giving me life, let me just say. Good morning, Kasten. Good morning, Brother James Gray Jr. Good morning, Sister Janet. Hey, Sister Reuben. And Deacon Reuben, if he's there. Hey, y'all, that's enough speaking. Let's get started. So we are going to go back to, um, and we were talking yesterday um, about Psalm 40, verse 17, where he says that the Lord thinketh upon me. It says that I am poor and needy. And uh, he says, thou art my help and my deliverer. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. And then the Lord spoke to me about this passage in, I, in Isaiah 58, verse 9. But I want to go back to verse 1. And verse 4 is where we stopped yesterday. So I want to pick up right there. And he says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Listen, I think I said it yesterday, but it's worth saying again. We should want to know where we stand and how we are with God. We should want to be clear in our relationship with God. You don't want anything coming between, as the song says, my soul and the Savior. I don't want anything to, to keep me separated from him. I don't want anything that's going to draw me away from him into something else. And here in this passage, <coughs> excuse me, good morning, everybody. This passage, he tells them, um, show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know me. He says, but the thing is, they're not following me. Their hearts are so far from me. Listen, it doesn't matter what your mouth says if your heart isn't following. It's like telling somebody how much you love them, but you really don't even like them. It's like pretending you care about somebody and you really have you could you could you could just not even give a wooden nickel for them. That's hypocrisy. God is saying you act like you're you act like you're for me, but you actually are not following me. Your heart is so far from me. He's saying I need your heart and your mouth to line up. The scripture says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh, but there are people who lie and that's why the scripture says it says that God hates lying lips. He, he does not want us to, to misconstrue the truth by our actions. That our mouth is saying one thing, but our hearts are so far him, from him. Let's read. He says, they seek me daily, delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They seek me like they're the ones who did right, who were doing right. Like they were a nation who pursued me. And for so they didn't forsake the ordinances that the, the laws that I set up. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. And they act like they have no idea. He says, they say, we fasted. And you don't even see. We afflicted our soul and you don't take knowledge. Talking about God. Behold, in the day you're fat, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. You were having too much fun while you were fasting. You were having too much fun while you were fasting. You were having too much fun while you were fasting. You were not seeking the Lord. Now, beloved, I need you to understand that as believers, my message is to believers. As believers, we should seek the Lord the way he says to seek him, not just in what's comfortable for us. He says, behold, you fast for strife and debate. And to smite with the fist of wickedness, ye shall not fast as ye do this day. 
to make your voice to be heard on high. They were fasting as part of a debate. They were fasting to make themselves look good. They were letting everybody know that they were seeking the Lord. They were let as if they had some special privileges with God. He's saying, this is not the kind of fast I chose. This is not the fast that I want you to have that moves me. He says, is it such a fast that I've chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul, to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes unto him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? He said, those things are just outward, but your heart. Listen, God is looking for the heart. Is it not to deal thy bread? Mm, let's go back. Verse six. Is not this the fast that I've chosen? This is what he, this is the fast that God chooses. Fast, doing without food. However, whether it's doing without food or uh, drinking liquids only, however it is you choose to fast. Is it such a fast that I've chosen? Oh, is not this not the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry, that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, thou cover him, and thou shalt not hide thyself from thine own flesh. He says, when you fast like I've prescribed, when you actually let your actions follow through with what your mouth is saying, he says, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Then shall thine health spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. That re-reward means your rear guard. They'll come up behind, he'll come up behind you to protect you. Listen, when we seek the Lord, and sometimes we, we seek the Lord and we're not seeing these things, there may be other factors, but it's certainly saying that when we fast and seek the Lord the way he has designed, our light will break forth as the morning. Our health shall spring forth speedily. Our righteousness shall go before us. The glory of the Lord shall be the glory of the Lord is what makes us different. The glory of the Lord shining in our lives. The glory of the Lord being manifested. You, you don't have to call down fire out of the heavens, beloved. That's not what you need to do. You need to live a life. As my mom and I say, you can't live a raggedy old life. You got to live a life that honors God, monitoring what you say, guarding your heart, guarding your ears, guarding your eyes so that you don't let the, the world infiltrate your holiness. God is still calling for holiness. He's still calling for it. He's still calling for us to sanctify ourselves, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. There are things for us to do. He said, if you do these things, you're going to get a reward. I'm going to come behind you. He says in verse nine, and this was the scripture where we're talking about the Lord, our God, then shalt thou call and the Lord shall answer. That's an emphatic. He will answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Renette Ard, I'm going to pray that with you, to go before you and guide you. He will orchestrate. I love that word orchestrate. He will orchestrate your life. He will orchestrate your life. He says, if thou take away from thee the midst of the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. There are things we must do in order to receive God's best. And if thou draw, draw out thy soul to the, to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. Listen, do you see any darkness at noonday? Sun shining bright, high noon. He says, I'm going to cause your darkness to flee. 
and the Lord shall guide thee. I love this verse. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. What's a drought? A drought is where there is no water. The earth is dry and parched. There's no harvest. There's no plants because the Lord has withheld the rain. And I know we think of it as, because we're not an agrarian, agrarian society, we don't necessarily depend, farmers do, and we should too in a sense, we don't depend, uh, we don't have a garden or a field where we're gathering in our harvest, but he's saying he's going to satisfy our soul when it's dry. Sometimes we have seasons where it seems dry, like God doesn't hear us, like God is not listening to us. He's listening to you, beloved, because his word said so. His word will not fail. Now, I know feelings, and I keep trying to tell us, let's bring those feelings in line with the word. Let's cast out every thought that's contrary to the word of God. Bring them into captivity. What's captivity? Put them in prison. Lock them up. Throw away anything that's contrary to the word. And let's believe what God says. He says he will guide us continually. So what does that mean? He's going to guide us continually. We pray the word of God. We don't beg. We can pray and ask God, Lord, you promised to guide me continually. You said that you would satisfy the afflicted soul. You said you would satisfy my soul in drought. In the dry seasons, you will still cause me to be sad. The scripture says he opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living creature. Hallelujah. He opens his hand and satisfies all of us. He knows what we need. He knows when we need it. He knows how to get it to us. We just have to learn how to wait and trust his timing. Exactly, Elder Ingram. We have so much noise, so many other voices. We, he said, my sheep hear my voice. Lord, help us to hear you. Open our ears that we can hear you. Don't let us be dull of hearing. How do you know somebody's voice? I remember I, I, I was the voice on our church's uh, radio broadcast. And I would, I, and I've had this happen many times. I would be in a store and I would just be talking to my sister or whoever was with me. And they were like, I know you. And I thought, I don't know them. I'd never seen them before. I know your voice. You're that woman that's on that radio broadcast. And I said, yes, ma'am, that's true. People don't, you don't have to, the more you hear somebody, the more familiar you are with their voice. When you learn to hear the voice of the Lord, you spend time in his word, you spend time praying, you spend time worshiping, you learn to hear his voice. We're his sheep. We should hear his voice. And another we will not follow. I was thinking about this sheep and shepherd thing the other day and watched a couple of videos from people in Switzerland and Israel who had sheep. And they were trying to make the point that the sheep don't come to everybody. There was a girl, I said this to you all the other day, but this girl was calling the sheep using the same terminology, same verbiage, the same sounds. The sheep never looked up. They didn't even look up. <laughs> but when their shepherd called, they stopped paid attention, and then they came because they knew the shepherd's voice. That's our prayer. Lord, help us to know your voice, and we don't want to follow any other voice but yours. Help us to be uh, like the sheep. We are your sheep. Help us to hear your voice and follow. And actually, the girl tried to even feed the sheep. The sheep ran away, looked at her, in another video, looked at her and ran away. He wanted what she had, but she didn't know her. She was a stranger. That's why the Lord said, my sheep know my voice. Help us to know your voice, God. I got to go. My time is gone. The Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. He will satisfy us. He will flourish us. He will cause us to flourish. 
we will be like a watered garden. Psalm 1 and 1 says that we will bring forth our fruit in season. In season. That's us. We want to be fruitful. All right, my time's gone. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Let your word resonate in our hearts. The simply, the simple truths of your word that we are your sheep and you are the shepherd. Help us to hear you. That when we call, we know you answer. When we cry, you say, here I am. Be our guide. Lead us. Help us to follow your voice and to resist all the other voices and noise that the enemy would throw our way. We thank you, dear God, that your word is at work in us and that your glory is being revealed in our lives. Every son and daughter who's listening to my voice, every woman of God, every man of God, every child, cover them. Father, cover our children at school today. Cover them on the buses. Cover them in the classrooms. Let their teachers see them and love them. Give them favor. Father, we thank you that you give your sons and daughters favor. Let blessings chase us down and overtake us. We thank you for all that you've done and for what you're doing. We receive these things done even now. Be our healer today. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Hey, Kaiva. God bless you, sweetie. Have a good day. All right, everybody. My time is gone. And, um... Pray for me. My name is Edna Gray Jameson. Pray for me. Call my name when you pray. If, I, if you think about me, just say, Lord, help that lady. That'll be good enough. All right. Thank you for sharing. Please share if you have not. Um, share and type in catch the replay. Hashtag, hashtag graced for today. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. Uh, same name. Go over and catch a replay there or share it with somebody so that they can hear the word of the Lord. We need to, the word of God is what people need. I know they act like they need money. They need this. They, they need the word of God because the word of God will change their lives. I got to go. Listen, oh, you don't need time for another message. So join me in the morning. Don't forget about my book on Amazon, 30 Lessons on Unapologetic Living. My name, Edna Gray Jameson. Type that in, search. It's the only book you'll find for me. All right. See, so join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted, and you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.